لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثير الحمد لله الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه وعلى عفوه بعد قدرته والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الناس إني رسول الله إليكم جميعا صدق الله العظيم Respected viewers, welcome back once again to our program The Perfect Example where we explore different aspects of the life of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In our last program, we looked at the fascinating phenomena of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam writing letters to the kings of the world at that time. We had discussed Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's letter to Heraclius, also known in Arabic as Hiraqal, Azim al-Rom, the leader of the Roman Empire. Then we had looked at Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sending Abdullah bin Hudhafa al-Sahami to the Khusro, Khusro or Khusro, Khusro the second he was, and how he responded to that letter. And that is where we had broke off last week. Khusro had shown disrespect to the letter of Nabi Karim Sallallahu tore it into pieces, wrote a letter to the king of Yemen by the name of Bazan, and told him, send two able-bodied people and go and arrest this person. How does he dare write such a letter to me? And when he received, Bazan received this from his master or the, the king that was over them. Bear in mind, as we had said towards the end of the last program, Yemen, Somalia, etc. at that time were protectorates and they were under the influence of the Persian Empire. So Bazan sent two people. One of them's name was Kharkhara. The other name was Abdawiya. And these two people, they go first to Makkah Mukarramah. They first go to Taif. And in Taif, they come to know that Nabi Karim Sallallahu had migrated to Medina. And the people of Makkah are very happy. They tell one another that now, you know, we could not defeat Muhammad and the Muslims. Now the Persian Empire will do it on our behalf. These two people, they come to Medina and Munawwara. And when they come to Medina and Munawwara, they find that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa is there. But such is the awe of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when they see Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa they tremble out of the awe and respect of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sees them. They come in front of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa And Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa is in a way not happy and disgusted by their appearance. Because their appearance happened that they did not have any beard, they were clean shaven, and they had big moustaches and big mush, you know, moustache. So Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, who, who asked you to dress like this? And he said that our king and our customs dictate that we dress in such a way. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, but my Allah has commanded me to keep the beard long and to trim the moustache. That is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me. Bear in mind that Nabi Karim sallallahu could not even bear this aspect from a non-Muslim that he must go against the appearance of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the meanwhile, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then tell them that you have come with this particular aspect and this intention of arresting me. But the fact of the matter is that while you are here, and Allah Ta'ala had informed Nabi Karim Sallallahu by wahi that your king's Khusro the second's son has overthrown him in the course of a night, had killed him and his name was Sherwi. And Sherwi had killed his father and has overtaken the kingdom. So what are you talking about? Your king has sent you, your king has been killed by his own son. And then Nabi Karim Sallallahu converses with them. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu speaks to them in a nice way, inviting them. And they are taken aback by the akhlaq and the conduct of Nabi Karim Sallallahu And they go back to Bazan. And they relate to Bazan what had happened. They said, we met Muhammad 
and you told us to, to, to arrest him and bring him in the presence of the Persian Empire, we have been overtaken. When we went there, we started trembling and we started shivering out of awe, not because of his authority or because of him going to kill us, just by his mere presence, by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention that Allah, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Nusir to bir ru'b. Allah Ta'ala had helped me with a sense of presence that creates awe without being a frightening type of presence. Awe is very different from being frightened of someone. It is awe out of respect by the dignity of the person whom you come into contact with. And Bazan starts hearing and he said, but this is amazing. Let me listen to his teachings. He listens to his teachings. And amazingly, Bazan, who was instructed by his king, the Persian Empire, to send two able-bodied persons to arrest Nabi Karim Sallallahu after he hears about the conduct and he hears about the teachings of Nabi Karim Sallallahu he accepts Islam. Now this was a very a remarkable aspect because it has far-reaching consequences in terms of Islamic history. Yemen became one of the strongholds of Islam. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu used to speak very highly about Yemen. Nabi Karim Sallallahu said, Iman and Hikmat will reside in Yemen. Iman and strongness of faith and conviction and wisdom will be in there. And it's also amazing if you look at history that many of the conquest and many of Islam's spreading far and wide throughout the east coast of Africa, in Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Maldives, came about by the traders that emanated from Yemen. So this was a very remarkable aspect. Look at how far-reaching the consequences of the letters to the kings was. And also, this was the aftermath. And this was the consequences of what Allah Ta'ala had said. Inna fatahna alaka fatham mubina. We have granted you a great victory. That victory came from where? From the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Because of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, Muslims and Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was free from hostility and warfare and they could concentrate on these aspects and look at the far-reaching consequences of that peace treaty. That people of Yemen accepted Islam. That people of Yemen became the springboard for the spread of Islam throughout the eastern, East African coast and Indonesia and Malaysia. All of that which stemmed from the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. So let us always bear in mind that hostility is not something that you and I should crave for. It is not something that is the objective of Islam. Because in hostility, people become blinded. People become all the time focused only on hostility. Through the means of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, look at the far-reaching consequences and benefits that flowed upon Islam and the Muslims because of that approach. Then Nabi Karim Sallallahu writes a letter to Negus, the king of Abyssinia. And this was a remarkable letter. Just look at it. Nabi Karim Sallallahu write, Muhammad Muhammad, Rasulullah ila najashi and from Muhammad, the Rasul of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Najashi, the king of Abyssinia, Salamun alaik, amma abad. After the khutbah, after the salam, I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah, who al malikul quddus, as salamul mu'minul muhaymin, and who is, with all these attributes, the great, the, the one who grants peace, as salam, the one who grants peace, and the one who is, al muhaymin, the one who is a protector, all of these things, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes mention of the attributes of Almighty Allah. Then Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam refers to Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and said, Isa ibn Maryam was a Rasul of Almighty Allah. He was born miraculously and he is the ruh and the soul of Almighty Allah and the word of Almighty Allah in terms of being a manifestation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's greatness and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's power and qudrat. And therefore, I invite you to the oneness of Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to follow Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Nabi Karim sallallahu ends the letter to Najashi with these beautiful words that we have written letters to other kings, but we do not have the good expectations in terms of the response to those letters comparative to the letter that we are sending to you. Because this Najashi, this king, was the very same king who had shown kindness and who had offered sanctuary and protection to the Muslims from the persecution of the people of Makkah and from the Quraysh in the earlier stages of Islam. Something that we always bear in mind, that the people of Africa had given protection to the Muslims in the time of persecution. May we always remember that and may if Africa always be a sanctuary for Islam. And when Najashi read this letter, Najashi 
came down from his throne and he sat down in humility and he told uh, the envoy of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the envoy of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa was Amr bin Umayyah al-Dhamiri and he told him that I have accepted Islam and he accepts Islam and he's told Amr bin Umayyah al-Dhamiri that no doubt whatsoever that this is the last prophet of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I accept Islam and then he wrote back a letter to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa expressing his Islam, not only expressing Islam, but also making mention that I do not believe about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam other than what you have said, that he is a messenger of the Almighty Allah, he is a human being, that he was born miraculously. I do not believe that he is Allah or he is part of the Trinity. And then Najashi sends 60 people, including his son, as an envoy to show his acceptance of Islam and appreciation of the letter. Unfortunately, that ship which was supposed to come to Nabi Karim Sallallahu sinks on the way. But undoubtedly, this was also a very significant aspect that Najashi accepted Islam upon the letter that was written to him by our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We will continue after the break. <laughs> Respected viewers, welcome back once again to our program. Prior to the break, we were speaking about Nabi Karim Sallallahu letters to the kings and then the letter to Negus, the king of Abyssinia, and how he responded by accepting Islam. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu showed him tremendous respect. And when he passed away, Nabi Karim Sallallahu made ghaibana janaza namaz, janaza namaz in abstentia. This is the only time in the history where it is recorded that Nabi Karim Sallallahu made ghaibana janaza namaz. Janaza Salat, Salat upon the Mayyat and upon the dead person in his absence. And this was a remarkable tribute to Asmaha, the king of Abyssinia, as he was known. And that was his name. And he was the king of Abyssinia, Najashi. Then Nabi Karim Sallallahu also wrote a letter to the court of Makaukas. Makaukas was the leader of the Qubti tribe in Egypt. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi sent Hatim bin Abi Balta. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi wrote him a letter very similar to the letter that he wrote to Heraclius Azim al Rum. And of course, keep in mind, Makaukas at that time was also in some way under the influence of the Roman Empire, although they were given certain degree of autonomy in terms of leadership and authority. In this way, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi writes a letter, and Hatim bin Abi Balta, he comes with regard to this aspect and he gives Makaukas the, the letter of Nabi Karim Sallallahu inviting him to Islam, telling him that you are a Christian, come let us come to a common cause that we only believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and we believe in the oneness of Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Makaukas asked Hatim bin Abi Balta this one uh, question. He said, if your, if your prophet was a true prophet and then when the people of Makkah, they expelled him from Makkah and Mukarrama, why didn't he curse them so that the Almighty Allah could destroy them? So Hatim bin Abi Balta, keeping in mind that Makaukas was a Christian, said that when Isa ibn Maryam was also expelled from Jerusalem, why didn't he also curse the people of Jerusalem? And the reason why he didn't curse is the very same reason why Nabi Karim Sallallahu didn't do so. And Makaukas said, you are a wise person who has come to a wise person. At that time, Mughir ibn Shu'ba was in the vicinity. So Makaukas calls him and asks him various questions with regard to Islam, Muslims, and Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he replies to them. And Makaukas gives, uh, ask him, Mughir ibn Shu'ba gives him the various type of answers. And Makaukas said, this is a true messenger of the Almighty Allah. Why don't you follow him? And Mughir ibn Shu'ba said, that even if the entire world follows him, we will not follow suit and we will not do so. This was because of the hostility. And Makokas tells him, you are a foolish and naive person. Makokas, in the meanwhile, sends some gifts to Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi sends a mule, sends two slave girls. One of them was Maria Qibtiya, radiallahu ta'ala who was to father the son of Nabi Karim She was supposed to give birth to Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi son Ibrahim. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Father Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam, from the womb of Maria Qibtiya. And in this way, this incident was, she was sent by Makaukas, who was in charge of Egypt. And he does not accept Islam. 
but he shows some sort of respect to the latter and he shows some inclination knowing this is the truth but much to his detriment that he doesn't accept the truth and in the meanwhile Nabi Karim Sallallahu when he comes to know from Hatim and Nabi Balta what Makoukas did Nabi Karim Sallallahu said he is unfortunate but very soon his kingdom will fall and how true was the prediction of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that in a short period of time in the rule of Umar radiallahu ta'anhu Egypt came under the control and influence of Islam and the Muslims through the prediction and the, and the greatness of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also then addresses letters to other rulers in the region. Although they would not have the same power and influence of the letters that were written to Heraclius, the king of the Roman Empire, the king of the Persian Empire, and then of course to Najashi, the king of Abyssinia, and also to Makoukas, the leader of Egypt. But they were important letters nonetheless. Nabi Karim Sallallahu wrote a letter to Munzir bin Sa'wa of Bahrain. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu also invited him to Islam. And this letter was sent by Alai Hadrami, who later on also became the governor, not only in Nabi Karim Sallallahu time, but in the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'anhu. That Nabi Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'anhu, because he had taken the letter to the king of Bahrain, Munzir bin Sa'wa, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala makes him the governor of Bahrain. And Munzir bin Sawa, when he receives a letter, engages Alai Hadrami and he speaks to him and he said that my religion, which I look upon it, is based solely on materialism. It only speaks about the prosperity of this material world. Islam is such a beautiful religion. It talks about prosperity both in this world and the year after. And he accepts Islam. And he takes that letter very, very kindly. And then... He tells Alai Hadrami, previously I used to look at disgust with anyone who embraced this religion. Now I'm wondering, what is the position of a person who doesn't embrace this religion? He writes back to Nabi Karim Sallallahu and he says, I presented this letter. Some of my people have accepted my religion. Some of them, meaning Islam, some of them haven't accepted. How do I deal with the situation? Nabi Karim Sallallahu then writes a letter back to him to tell him with regard to what is the true cause of action to take in such a situation? Nabi Karim Sallallahu writes a letter to Harith Ghassani, whose letter, Nabi Karim Sallallahu letter was taken by Shuja bin Wahab. And he brings his letter to Harith Ghassani, Damascus. He was a king and he was the ruler of Damascus. But he was directly under the influence of the Roman Empire, under Heraclius. And Harith Ghassani tears up the letter, shows great amount of disrespect said, who is this who's written me this letter? And I'm going to prepare an army to go and attack him. And then he seeks the permission of Heraclius, the leader of the Roman Empire, under, whom, under whose influence he was the ruler of Damascus. He was sort of a governor rather than a true ruler of the entire area. He was a governor of the Roman Empire. And Heraclius writes him a letter and said, just keep your army at bay. And what is amazing is, that the governor shows such disrespect, whereas Heraclius himself had showed great amount of respect to the elder, as we had previously made mention. But amongst them, there was a doorkeeper who was a Christian who came to realize that this is the last prophet of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he accepts Islam and he sends his salam back to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam via Shuja bin Wahab. And when Shuja bin Wahab comes back to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Harith Ghassani, had treated this letter with disdain and disrespect. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will deal with him. And of course, Damascus was also to fall at the hands of Islam and the Muslims in a very short period of time thereafter, in the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu accepts the salam of the doorkeeper. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu said, he has spoken the truth. And Allah Ta'ala has guided him towards the truth. Look at the barakah of Nabi Karim Sallallahu letter. It was addressed to someone else. And the doorkeeper hears the letter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him hidayat. And he becomes, and that letter becomes a means of hidayat for him. Nabi Karim sallallahu also writes a letter to the ruler of Amman. Amman, of course, is today in Jordan. And Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu ta'ala, takes that letter to, to the leader of Amman. Now, his name was Julundi and he had two sons. And when Amr ibn al-As brought the letter to him, then... At that stage, he wanted his two sons to be part and parcel of the entire conversation. And Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala then reads out the letter. And then he asked Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala many questions. 
And part of the questions was that, you know, what has happened? What has been the response of the previous letters? And Amr ibn al-As relates to him all those aspects with regard to the letters. And he is taken aback to hear that Negus had also accepted Islam. What is amazing is Amr ibn al-As was among the prominent leaders of the people of Makkah, the Quraysh. And he accepted Islam at the hands of Negus, at the hands of Najashi. And this is an amazing aspect that Amr ibn al-As, Quraysh, he was amongst those who was in the forefront against Islam and the Muslims with Abu Sufyan, etc. And he accepted Islam at the hands of Najashi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala the one who conquers Egypt. And he is known as a conqueror of Egypt. But he accepts Islam at the hands of Najashi. And he takes Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's letter to the ruler of Amman. And the ruler of Amman thereafter also accepts Islam. And this is the amazing aspect with regard to it. In fact, the ruler of Amman, after hearing the letter and after engaging Amr ibn al-Asr in conversation, he makes mention that I have very greatly considered the letter of the unlettered prophet. And without doubt, he enjoys everything that is good. He prohibits everything that is evil. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him victory over his enemy, he does not gloat in vanity over what has happened to his enemies, but he is always humble. And therefore, these are attributes of the Prophet of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He fulfills his promises, and therefore I've accepted Islam. And then he composed certain poetry, and he sends it back to with Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala. So in short, these were some of the letters that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had written. And in there, it contains many aspects of the greatness of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We learn many, many lessons. Some of the more prominent and more important letters were those that were addressed to the, the superpower, so to say, of the time. But even those that were sent to Munzir bin Sawa in Bahrain, those to, to the ruler of Amman, it had such an impact that these particular countries came under the influence of Islam. And up till this day, they remain under the influence of Islam because of the barakah and because of the blessings of the letters that were written by our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And undoubtedly, this aspect, the letters of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the kings of the world, in which we have spent more than two programs on this, was an important aspect in the life of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we learn many, many aspects in that. May Allah give you a topic of understanding and putting that same confidence of carrying Islam on our sleeve into our lives. وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا